this is the most awkward position for a button to be in. This is unironically, like, slightly addictive. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Okay, so literally, bro, I know the title is, like, gonna be, like, I hate simulators or something, and I, I kind of do. You know how they're, like, all the same? Like, all, all, every single sim, I don't know, maybe it's just me, maybe I'm just very an unoriginal person and I cannot appreciate the finer details or whatever. Saul's RNG, the recent game, is the huge example of this. People think that I like the game because I made a video about it, but it's like, I don't like the game. I just, I just said why, the reason why it succeeded was genius, because it recognized that all simulators are the same, and then they just realized like, oh, we need to literally just make our game just like the most raw gambling simulator possible. And so they did, and so, and it worked, right? Because the thing is, if you hop onto Roblox right now, now, like a lot of the very more popular ones are simulators, right? Yeah, Pet Simulator 99, Slab Battles technically is a simulator, Sol's RNG obviously is here. Um, what else do we have? Okay, that's okay. So I just I'm just making this video because like I don't care who you are, okay? I don't discriminate. If you're like a beginner developer, if you don't even develop, if you hate developing, or if you're like an amazing expert advanced developer with like 20 years of experience somehow, literally all I want to show you is just how people develop these games. I remember I remember bro, I tried to like watch, you know, code tutorials when I first started out, and every single person, it was almost like they, they weren't human, you know what I mean? It's like the way they would speak. It's like, it's like you wouldn't speak this way to an another human being. Like I would hop into these beginner tutorials and then they would be like, okay, so to access the kernel, what's the kernel, bro? What are you talking about? I'm going to make this as hu humanly readable or listenable as possible. I'll actually open up a script real quick, right? And let's actually just make a couple comments. And so what I'm thinking is we just need to give player uh, value, okay? So we just need to give the player like cash or gems or tokens or I don't know, whatever you, where, what credits, if you're going for some dumb sci-fi game, sci-fi, sci-fi, whatever. Then what we need to do is we need to let player increase value. So more cash, more gems, more credits, and then boost the player's increase amount. So if the player can increase their value by one, we need to allow them to buy something that's then going to allow them to increase their value by two, and then by three, and then by five, and then by 10, and then by 1000, right? Like, that's literally it. It's just an incremental, exponential, never-ending grind, which a lot of people find fun. That's why these games are popular in the first place, right? Hell, I'm, I'm literally going to make my own simulator game soon. Like, you're going to see it. I'm going to start, like, promoting it and making videos about it, and it, it is going to reach number one on Roblox, I guarantee it, because, like, I'm just that good of a developer. So, for this example, the way for the players to increase the value is going to be by pressing on this cube, okay? Click detector, which is going to allow us to detect when a player has clicked on the part. I, I understand, you know, it's a very, very difficult name to understand, click detector, I get it. But the very first thing we got to do is to actually give the player values, right? Which I know is, it, it, it kind of like sound, like it makes sense in your head when you say it, like, oh yeah, well, the players need values. But then like, imagine going onto Roblox Studio and then like, I'm, I tell you, okay, give the player values. What? <laughs> What do you mean? How do, okay, I mean, if I play the game right now, right, like, we have the player, and we have a leaderboard, and you know you know how some, some Roblox games do have, like, things on the leaderboard? Like, they have the name, and then they have, like, cash. Well, the way they do it is whenever a new player joins, so inside of this player's thing here, you know, every player is contained here, all you have to do is just inside of the player, you have to add a folder, okay? You have to add a folder. I'm editing mid-game, so I don't even know if this is going to work. Yep, there we go. So you, you, you need to add a folder inside of your player called leader stats, like so, like literally called leader stats. And then inside of that folder, you need to add a, um, a number value, okay? Yeah, so basically we, we have an int value, and then I can set its value to be like 19 or something. And then the value is equal to 19, right? That's literally it. We just add a value inside of the leader stats, blah, 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 whatever. You get the gist, okay? So what I'm thinking we do is we access that, that player's uh, service, right? So these are called services. And then we need to understand when a player joins the game, which is very simple. It's just dot player added. So basically this will fire whenever a player is added. But the thing is, it's going to fire. But then how do we actually tell it that like to do something when it, when it fires? And that's a very good question. There's like two ways of doing this, but the fastest one and the one I always use is you just connect it. Okay, so there's a function called connect. Basically, so whenever the event is fired, whenever a new player is added, we can connect it to a function. And in case you don't know what a function is, it's just like, it's just the code. It's just code that runs, okay? So basically any code that we write here will fire whenever the player is added, right? Now, now if, you're, if you're a smart person, if you're a very highly intellectual person, I don't know, whatever, um, you might be wondering, oh, but how do we know what player has been added, right? And that's actually a good question because different events sometimes give you data, right? So for example, this event, player added, 
when it fires, it actually gives you the player who was added. And the way we access that player is when we connect it to a function, it actually tells us right here. So it's saying inside of the function, we get the player, right? So we, we get we get a player, which is data type player. I understand that that might not make sense. Like what's a data type? What do you mean? Literally, all you got to know is that it's going to just give us the player and we can name this player whatever we want, by the way. We can name it FGFG. We can name it player. We can name it our player. This is just a variable. You can name it whatever you want, but this will be equal to the player who was added. So I'll just call it player because it's easy and it's understandable, right? So what we got to do is we need to create, like I said, that folder called leader stats, and then we need to create that like number value, right? So what I'll do is I'll say local leader stats, um, simple is equal to instance dot new folder. So that's how you make a new item folder. I'll, I will say leader stats dot name is equal to leader stats has to be precisely like this and then what i'll do is right before i actually put the folder inside of the player because right now when we create the folder it's like in this limbo state where like it exists but it doesn't exist and the way we actually like actually put it inside of the player is we just say leader stats dot parent is player so we just parent it to the player meaning that it's going to become a child of the player meaning that it's going to be in the player right fairly simple the reason i'm not doing this yet though is because i want to actually add the number value into it first and then actually put all of that inside so just so like everything's ready and then we can you know push everything out at once so local um cache i don't know whatever name you can name this whatever you want honestly instance.new int value okay and then we'll say cache dot um name is equal to cache sure why not okay and then cache dot parent is equal to leader stats and then leader stats dot parent is equal to player okay so if I run the game right now, and yep, there we go. Amazing cash. And so like I said, now we need to let the players um, increase the value. And so here what I'll do is I'll just say workspace. Okay, wait for child part. Wait for child, click the texture. So basically what we're doing here is we're saying workspace. Yeah, you know, we're getting the parts. The reason I'm using wait for child. So you could just say workspace.part.parts.clickdetector. Like you could get the click detector this way. I just use wait for child. People have been telling me that it's like bad practice or whatever, but just for me, I've had errors where something wouldn't work because like the thing wasn't loaded in yet, right? So all that wait for child does is it just waits. It just ensures that that thing you're looking for is actually fully loaded so that it, it doesn't give you an error, right? And so that now that we have access to the click detector, we can do dots and then we can do mouse click. We can do mouse hover, enter, mouse hover, leave. Yeah, whatever. So I'll just say mouse click, okay? We'll connect that to a function, which will give us the player who clicked, which is a player once again, right? So as you can see, uh, this this first name is just what Roblox tells us. This is Roblox is a way of kind of telling us what this value is supposed to be, right? And then the second thing is just it's telling us the actual type of value, right? In the same way that this is a folder and this is an int value, right? Player is another type of data. Now we can't actually make a new player. It's not gonna it's gonna give us an error. Like we we don't have that privilege, right? But that's how it works, right? So again, I can put another player. So now whenever uh, the click detector gets pressed. We just want to increase the value of cash by one. The way we, the way you increase the value of an int value, by the way. So if I make an int value right now, it has a property inside of itself called value. So literally, the way you increase the value is you just say, you get the int value. So I, so in my case, it's cash dot value. So we access the value, and then to actually add a value on top of its current value. So what I mean by this is like, how do I, how do I add one to to the current value plus one? That's not gonna work. That's not, that doesn't work. Equal to one. Well, that's just going to make it equal to one. What you could do is you could either say cash.value is equal to cash.value plus one. So equal to its current value plus one. So this works. Another way of writing this, which is a little easier, is just saying plus equals one. So we need to actually get the player's leader stats and then get their cash. Yeah, and then I guess we could just say cash.value plus equals one. And oh yeah, there we go. Awesome. But now it's like, what if I wanted to double... What if I want to double the cash amount that I get? Okay, how do I do that? Let's. Uh, I'm gonna actually make this quite simple, okay? Because I like I, I could make this game look very nice, but literally all I'm gonna do is just add a button, okay? A very simple button. I'm gonna position it here. Uh, sure, yeah. Th this is the most awkward position for a button to be in, but I'm gonna script the button to say script dot parent. So script dot parent the button dot activated. So whenever the button is actually clicked, we'll connect it to a function. Which give it, it does give us certain like items, but we actually don't need any of these, so we can just leave this blank. And what I want to do is I want to fire a message to the server to uh, take away the player's cash and then increase their overall amount of cash earned. Okay. And the reason we want to send a message to the server is because whenever something is done on a local script, it changes just for that player. Okay. 
but when something is done on the server, it changes for everyone. So for, for you know, dealing with like cash, we want to change it for everyone. We want to make sure that it's actually like legit and not just for the player, like a little hallucination. And the way we send the message is we just use a remote event. Just, yeah, put one inside replicated storage. And then you just say game, replicated storage, remote events, fire server. Fair, fairly simple. On the server, you say game, replicated storage, wait for child, remote event, same thing. Except you get it as an event. So instead of actually firing, you get the events and then you connect it which will give you the player who fired it, okay? I hate this thing so much, dude. I'm, I'm not even joking. I, this is like the worst. Can I disable this? And so what I'm thinking we do, okay, is that whenever the player presses the button, we'll just check, we'll check how much cash the player has, okay? So I'll actually copy this over here, like so. And I'll just say, if player, oh no, wait, if cash dot value is more than or equal to 50, okay? So if it's above or equal to the 50, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract 50 from cash. So we're gonna say cash dot value Okay, minus equals 50. So basically it, what we're doing here is we're checking like, okay, if the player has enough cash, then we're going to um, uh, remove 50. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try and actually make it so that the next time the player presses the button, they're going to earn one more cash. Okay, all I want is I just want to add a value to the player that's going to be associated with how much um, cash they're supposed to make. And what we could do is we could honestly just say local cash multi is equal to instance.new its value. Uh, because I, I because I don't want this this int value to actually be seen on the leader stats, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna parent it to the leader stats. I will parent it to just the player. Okay, so cash multi is equal to um or not equal to dot name is equal to cash multi. I'll set cash multi uh, value equal to one because by default the value is zero, right? So if we multiply it by zero, the player will earn nothing. So we want the default value to be one, and then I'll say yeah cash um multi dot parent is equal to player. And what I'm thinking is. What we're going to do is that when the player clicks the button and if they have at least 50 cash, then we're going to take away that 50 cash and then we're going to increase cash multi. OK, so I'm going to say player wait for child cash multi dot value. What am I doing? <laughs> dot value. Come on, bro. Dot value plus equals one. Yes, yeah, so we're going to we're going to increase this by one. OK, and the last thing to do is when we increase the player's value. I'll just put this in brackets because you know how in math, you know how they did this dumb thing where like they started introducing brackets like bed mass or whatever it was called where now it's like one plus five times three. And because what usually you would do right without the brackets in these dumb little equations is that you would multiply first and then you would add, right? That's how it would always work. But here, if it's in the brackets, well, then you do the brackets first. So you add first and then you multiply. I don't even know why I'm giving you a math lesson here, right? All I'm doing is we're just going to increase it by one times player wait for child cash multi dot value. So we're going to just take one and multiply it by cash multi. And I guess a smart thing to do would also be to increase, like, like in, in, like in a good simulator game, we probably don't want the upgrades to be the same price. Like probably once, once I upgrade once, I probably want it to actually um, increase, which actually, you know, you know what we could do? We could say local price. And we can set it to equal to 50. Yeah, so we're just going to take the price of 50. And then we're just going to times that price by cash multi. So if cash multi is 1, meaning it's our first time upgrading, then it's going to be 50 because it's times 1. But then if we upgrade it once, then it's going to be 2. So it's going to be price times 2. So the price is going to be equal to 100. So then instead of 50, I'll just, I'll just say price. I guess the smart thing to do would actually be to inform the player like how much this stuff is going to cost, right? So we'll just say um, players equal to game dot players local player. So we can do this because we're on a local script, right? You can't get the local player on a server script. And then we'll just say local player multi. So player multiplier is equal to player wait for child cash multi. OK, local price is equal to 50. OK, and then we'll say, oh, no, yeah, 50 um, times player multi dot value. OK, so the, the very first time the player even joins the game, we're going to get the price and then we're going to set the button dot text. So we're going to say script dot parent dot text equal to um, we're going to make it. We're going to set it equal to the price and then we're going to just add a string cash like so. So it's, it's just going to say number and then cash. So 50 cash, then 100 cash, then whatever, etc. Right. And the way we can actually keep on updating this when we actually increase the multiplier, then we're going to say game replicated storage um, remote events and we're going to fire back to the clients. Okay, so we're going to fire back to our player. Game, replicated storage, wait for child remote events, on client's event, connect function, like so. And so then we're going to probably do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah, I, th I, think that, I think that's good. 50 cash, 
So now I'm going to keep on making 50 or not 50, making one. So I'll keep on spamming the button. Okay, now I have 50. 100 cash. And now it's two. That is so cool. And actually to test this better, I'll switch to the server and I'll just quickly modify my cash value to be equal to like 10K. Okay, let's try that. So it's 10K. So let's see. Okay. Okay, so what I, if I just keep cr clicking? Yep, 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 yep. Okay, awesome. How much do I make? I'm making 20. That is so cool. Look at that. Yeah, and if I click, yeah, it's, it's not letting me because I don't have enough cash. This is unironically like slightly addictive. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'll be honest, I wouldn't mind like continuously playing this, bro. Yeah, there we go. That's it. That's just how you make a simulator. Obviously, you know, make the button look better. Make like a, a shop where you sell stuff for Robux. Make the, the map bigger if this video interested you and if you actually want to make your own simulator you know you, you could scout youtube for tutorials because that that's why i began but it did took me it did take me a while so if you're someone with you know i think what if you're someone with like 30 bucks to spare i do have a course which is like six hours and I, it's not like one of those things where like oh buy my course like i actually really like my course and i think it's actually like really valuable like even to my friends who i know in, in real life i actually give them my course for free because I, I truly believe that it's a good course so if you know if if that sounds interesting to you it's a it's a it's a pet simulator course it's in the description so click on the link check it out um and yeah just you know i don't know leave a comment bo boost engagement give me likes whatever i i have these uh headphones as well actually i don't know if you noticed they're golden and they um they cost me like 300 canadian to get so if 10 people buy my course for 30 dollars uh, i'll get the money back that i wasted on these headphones you know if you if you do if you did enjoy this go check out my other tutorials as well because i do believe that those have good value and we are back to basics thank you for watching